fine at this point with just Donna Ray being the host. Maybe Donna Ray can, I have to leave and then Donna Ray can make Ben the co-host, but either way, you guys should be okay to have your meeting and then I'll be back. Deb knew, but Deb is not there. So Donna Ray will take notes and then I'll also rewatch the video to take some notes at the same time. Thanks, Thank Jennifer. You. Yep. Ready? So how's everyone doing tonight? We're all good. Very good, how are you? Doing well, thanks. Alive, which is a, a solid first step toward the good, right? Yes. <laughs> You're setting right, a low so. bar today. Right. <laughs> We're alive. <laughs> it's easier to have small victories that way, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> all right, so. We will call this meeting of the Human Rights Commission of Amherst to order at what time is it here? 6.35. Uh, 6.35 on December 17th. All right. So doesn't look like we have any attendees, right? So no public comment. All right. So are there any Human Rights Commission member reports to give? They don't have anything awesome to report today. Anything mediocre? Well, you, you know, I, I think a, a good report is that, you know, both myself and Chair and uh, Matthew, we were um, part of the committee to um, select the folks to be on the on the safety committee. And yesterday, um, you know, we interviewed someone. I'm not sure if that decision has been made or not. So I'm not going to say who that person was, but I think that, um, Based on that, if that person gets approved and uh, they accept, then it would be a great addition to, to that committee, which I, from what we hear, has gone very well. So really glad to to see that you know um, that committee is working and it's working diligently to come up with some solutions. And hopefully, at some point, once they make some decisions, we might be able to get the chairs out here to just talk to us about you know some of how the work is going and what recommendations they made on the first phase, because I believe they have two, correct me if I'm, if I'm mistaken, Matthew, two reports to to do to, uh, to the town council and, um, and then see if there's any way that we as the Human Rights Commission can help them um, you know, in any of the facets of achieving those goals that were set forth. So, and, to and all that, the yeah, at, Matthew, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm, I'll, I'll add to Sid's very good um, analysis there that, um, you know, they're working with the town manager. Um, so they are supposed to work with him and, and uh, then the town manager will present something to the town council. That first report will be due in January and the second one will be due in June. Um, and so the fact that, that the work is well underway um, and that the communication seems to be going well, um, we've only heard that from the town manager. Um, I, I don't know if, if anyone has heard from members of the, the community safety working group, but, um, but the fact that the town manager has come back and said that this is, is really uh, starting on, on the right foot is, uh, is very good for, for our town. So, see, there were awesome announcements here. Very good. Um, right, so, so let's see the the action and discussion items. Oh, were there were there any more member reports to give for anyone? We have Petua here now. Did did she have anything? Yeah, I'm here, but I don't have anything. I'm just... All right. So let's see. Town response to inequities. So, oh, I can't share. Can I? Can I share? I'm gonna try to share the the. Town Council's resolution here. I think I can do it. It says all panelists can share. So hopefully you're a panelist and hopefully you can. Yep. I think I can. If I have the right thing up. All right. So open. Oh, there we go. All right. Is that visible to everyone here? Yes. All right. So, yeah, I'm not sure when this was voted on. Does, does, 
Does anyone else have like a date as to when they voted on this? I, it says December 7th on the bottom. Okay. All right, so that was from last, or well, a little more than a week ago. Did we want to read this out loud or? I mean, I it's, it's, a, it's a really nice statement. I think yeah, if, yeah. if someone could, that would be very nice. I was going to say, I got it today, so I read through it because uh, I believe um, what uh, Jennifer sent it to everyone, correct? So, but if people want to, yeah, it's a really good statement. So, if people want to read it out loud, absolutely. All right. Do we have any volunteers to, to start off with here? Sid, what do you think? <laughs> oh boy, look at that. Put me <laughs> on the spot. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm gonna read from uh, from the uh, from here what you guys what you have here on uh, racism and archive racial equality for black residents. Where is the town of Amherst embraces its racial diversity and seeks to continue to implement policies? Wait, what happened, man? <laughs> Ben's <laughs> messing with you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas the town of Amherst embraces its racial diversity and seeks to continue to implement policies and procedures that address racial equality and social justice consistent with the town council resolution resolution in the aftermath of the murder of George, uh, Mr. George Floyd adopted on June 1st, 2020. And whereas the town of Amherst recognizes that there is an escalation of hatred, bigotry and overt racism in our country and Whereas, while this resolution addresses anti-Black racism in particular, the town of Amherst acknowledges that much more work is needed to address the impact of racism on other groups. And whereas, for the town of Amherst to fully, uh, wait, 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 did you go? You went a little too, too far. There we go. Uh, whereas, the town of Amherst to fully embrace the changes necessary to move our community forward, it is necessary to um, acknowledge and apologize for its own history of discrimination and racial injustice and whereas since the inception, the town of Amherst has enacted, supported and permitted official and unofficial policies and practices that have perpetuated, perpetrated the fallacy of white supremacy that have caused serious harm to the members of the black community and have fostered a persistent racial equity gap in town and whereas Massachusetts was the first colony to legalize slavery in 1641. And whereas there is a clear evidence that several prominent Amherst families and spiritual leaders, some of whom are memorized, memorized in the names of streets and buildings owned African slaves or supported the slave trade. And whereas despite the long history of civic, cultural, and economic engagement and participation of Black residents in the town of Amherst, there are almost no town of Amherst streets, parks, or buildings. Uh, okay, you lost me over there. Uh, where, where am I? Where am I? You're right here. Okay. Uh, all right. Black residents. Black residents. Uh, there are the town of streets, parks, or buildings named after Black residents, whereas on the New Year's Day of, of 1762, the town selectmen ordered the first free blacks to record um, of record to leave town, considering them likely paupers if they were allowed to stay in Amherst as residents. And a statewide law passed in 1788 requiring all non-resident blacks and Indians to leave the state of Massachusetts and formal non-resident free blacks uh, forbade non-residents free blacks from entering the state and whereas as of late 1948 the first african-american faculty member hired at the university of massachusetts amherst was unable to find housing for himself and his wife in amherst because of their race and whereas as late as 1950s uh 1950 racial Covenants existed in Amherst that pro prohibited property, for example, land on Blue Hill Roads from being sold or rented to any person or persons of color. And, yep, go all the way up. You can go all the way up. Okay. 
No, come back. I'll, I'll finish. I'll finish page one, and somebody can pick up page two. Okay. Whereas in a 1964 University of Massachusetts um, at Emmer's freshman class of nearly 2,500, only 12 students were of color, and of those 12, eight would go on to graduate. And two years, two years later, the entire black student population at the University of Massachusetts were around 50 people, or about 0.37% of the student body. Do you want me to take the next slide? Yep, go ahead. Okay. Uh, whereas in 1994, a public meeting held in Amherst, the NAACP decried oh. Amherst schools as lacking in teachers who reflect the students' racial and ethnic, ethnic makeup and insensitivity to those students' concerns. And whereas in 2001, a crowd of over 250 people, including town officials, the chief of police, local business owners, and members of the school and religious communities showed up on the Amherst Town Common for a rally for unity following the vandalization of a black owned store only five years after a similarly egregious event occurred at the same store. And whereas in 2015, more than 100 people gathered on the town common in support of a black Amherst Regional High School teacher recognized by the district as a dedicated and professional teacher of mathematics who provided exemplary instruction to our students. After, according to the district, she was subjected to harassing and hurtful events and notes during the course of her employment. And whereas in 2018, University of Amherst, wait a minute, University of Massachusetts at Amherst denounced acts of hate and intimidation and launched an investigation after flyers and stickers from a white nationalist hate group were found posted on campus the same day the author and historian Ibram A. Kendi a leading scholar of race and discriminatory policy, visited campus and delivered a lecture at the UMass Fine Arts Center on how to be an anti-racist. And whereas in 2019 in Amherst, the median family income for white families was 2.4 times greater than the median family, median family income for black families. 51% of the black population in Amherst was reported as being below the poverty line compared with 30% for the white population, and white residents in Amherst were four times more likely to own a home than black residents. And whereas the percentage of black high school seniors that dropped out of school was nearly three times that of white seniors. And while 40% of high school seniors went on to attend private four-year colleges or universities, none of them were black. And whereas in 2020, following the national outcry in response to the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis, Minnesota, dozens of Amherst residents spoke at a town council meeting and shared deeply painful personal stories about racial discrimination in policing and strongly urged, urged the town to hear their concerns and bring about change. And whereas the Amherst Town Council acknowledges the trauma inflicted on blacks by persistent white supremacist ideology resulting in psychological harm affecting education, economic health and social outcomes and conjures, and conjures painful memories of our town's past, not only for those who lived through these experiences, but also for the generations that have followed. And whereas the town of Amherst acknowledges this is a partial list which represents only a small sampling of Amherst's history of anti-black racism. Now, therefore, be it resolved that in accordance with the fundamental principles set forth in the Declaration of Independence, which asserts that all people are created equal and are endowed with the unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, the Amherst Town Con Council acknowledges the town's history of racially motivated policies and practices and apologizes for the damage this history has caused to the town, particularly its black residents. Be it further resolved that the Amherst Town Council hereby rejects prejudice and bigotry, including the idea that white people are inherently better or more worthy than any other group of people and declares that it stands against white supremacy. That was very powerful. Very. 
Ben, you you're uh, muted. Cool. That's why nobody got my cute little comment then. I was saying that that Say was it awesome. again. Not, not the content, but the fact that we read it was awesome. I, said I, I didn't realize how it, um, hard it is to read in front of people like that. And, <laughs> and thank you for, I'm so sorry I put you on the spot to do that. Oh, That's why I was good. like, oh, I gotta, I gotta take over. That must have been. Um, <laughs> Not a problem. Thank you. It's awkward trying to coordinate like the scroll to the read. I put yes. That. Well, clearly. It was very funny when you messed it up. I would have been, right. you know, it would have been hard <laughs> if you did that to me. But. <laughs> right. Luckily, I figured it out by the time. Right. Came. I'm new to the group, so, so you got to be a little nice to me, right? For now. For now. Okay. Okay. I'll take it. I think we haze you later. I have to check with everyone else. On I'll be ready. Right. So the next agenda item was the. Um, oh, the, the, did we want to have a discussion about the resolution at all? Can I, I just want to say that a lot of that stuff I didn't I didn't know about. So um, just for me personally, it's it's it was it was a lot to take in when I read it this afternoon when I got a copy of it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's Amherst has a, a long history, um, and you know, in a powerful history, including and I know a lot. Some people here know this that some of the um, Massachusetts 54th, you know, um, soldiers are buried in Amherst and we used to have some residents from the 54th here. So, you know, I think the more, you know, we can educate our pounds people about the history of Amherst, because um, a lot of times we talk about just, you know, the good stuff, right? Um, but let's really educate our town about the, uh, some of the ugliness that, that also happened in our town. Um, I was privileged to be friends with someone who's one of the old families of, of Amherst. You know, I know um, Liz knows them, Carol, Carol Davis, which you know, she has seen specimen, Carol Cox um, and Seb, and she was one of those family members, old black families in town. And, um, you know, there's lots of stories that she used to tell about, you know, her growing up in Amherst and also her family. Because I believe the family were here from like the early 1800s. So lots of history, and um, and I think it's something that um, needs to be taught in, in our schools to tell it should, you know, um, because it's it is part of the of, of American history and our existence. So I think that it should be a course just in an Amherst history for our, it's not elementary schools, at least in middle school, right? For people to take. I think there's a, a great deal of, uh, of black history here in Amherst that we don't talk about very often. Like I, I was actually just recently reading about James Baldwin's time in, in, in Amherst. I don't hear a lot of people talk about him having spent so much time here and having like, like took a class with him. Yeah. Yeah. That's my claim to fame is that I took a class with it, James Baldwin. Did you really? I did. Absolutely. How well did you do though? Huh? <laughs> How well did you do? This is the oh, I got I, I, I got an A minus in class, you know, and and you know, this is the story that I tell people that James Baldwin was so revered that his so the class was in a it's about 120 people in the class, right? And that class then breaks down into um, discussion sections. And the discussion leaders for James Baldwin were the full professors in the Afro-American Studies Department the Esoteries, the Michael Thelwells, the Chester Davis, you know, the um, Homer Meads. I mean, those were his discussion leaders, right? So, you know, and I'm, I don't say this in any demeaning way, it wasn't the graduate students. These were the, profes the professors, full professors that were um, his discussion leaders. So, no, it was, it was just amazing. I'm so, so glad that I got to, to take that course uh, with him. Um, and that's, you know, that's the beauty of, of, of being in Amherst, right? You get exposed to a lot of these things, you know, that a lot of the people are not privileged to have been exposed to. Absolutely. That's, I'm going to use my word of the night again. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, did, it, did anyone else have anything to add regarding the 
proclamation or just black history really. Amherst. That's kind of there's a lot of history in Amherst. Um, Goodwin Memorial AME Zion Church was part of the Underground Railroad. Um, there's a lot of things that people don't know about the rich history of um, Black Americans in Amherst, and it would be something that would be interesting for us actually to get behind and discuss in one of our meetings um, so that people understand who we are, where we came from, why we're here, why we stayed. You know, Sid it well knows me from back at UMass. And when I got here in 77, I wanted to go home every day. There wasn't a lot of people that looked like me on that campus, but there was some of us that for whatever reason found the history, found the beauty of Amherst and decided to stay here and raise our children, even though some of the things that Donna and some other people had mentioned they didn't know, we knew some of that and we decided to stay regardless. So I think it's important that the town take a look at the rich history of the folks that look like us that are here that contribute, um, you know, the greens in their typewriting business was a main staple in our town. And Miss Dorothea is no longer with us, but um, her husband and I got to remember his name. He's still around and we need to honor him. We look at people like the Coxes and we look at people, oh my God, I'm blanking on his name, uh, Ray, who passed away, I think last oh, year. Yes, Rattilis. who passed away last year. And, you know, we should be talking more about those folks that whose shoulders we stand on as members of black members of this community and to understand what they taught us. I look at before um, people like Unawumi Jean Moss and Ingrid Askew, and I could, I could go on and name a few people that I still look up to that taught me so, so much, um, not only about being uh, an African American, but about being a woman, about being a mother. Um, and they're here in this town. And we really should take a look at some of those, maybe have during Black History Month, we salute Black History members of the nation, but what about the ones that are right here in our town? We should be doing something about that. And that's actually on our it's an agenda item in a little bit. But I mean, it, it does remind us of that the past, um, you know, it, this this history, um, you know, what, what is the phrase that the past isn't history? It's not even the past, right? We're still living with so many of the issues today and we're responding to some of those issues when we're looking at um, that at some of those issues in education, when we're looking at some of those issues in housing. We're seeing that uh, it wasn't that long ago that uh, it was made very clear to people that they weren't welcome uh, in the town of Amherst. And it makes it very hard uh, to adjust things because you have to not only adjust um, the opportunities for people, but you have to adjust the tone that has been set up for decades and centuries uh, that, that specifically excluded people and asked people not to come and not to be part of our community. And even as the resolution is being um, thought about, talked about and passed in this town, we had an incident last Friday right at the high school with a swastika in the N-word. And that's not in the past, that's today. Um, mm -hmm. We have some young people and Petra can talk more about this if she chooses, but we have some young people from the members of POKU that have written a response to that and will be sharing that in writing with the school committee and um, um, help me, Petua, school committee. And oh, they wanted to put it in the PGO newsletter and they'll be meeting with um, Principal Sadiq um, tomorrow at noon to talk a little bit more about that with him. So just for y'all yeah. to know, you know, we're not talking about issues of the past and not even issues of the summer. We're talking about issues of today. 
Yeah, and uh, like one of the uh, like a big um, Jewish um, Instagram page, like they have like a big following. We got mentioned, like our high school got mentioned, like the anti-Semitic things that have happened like in the past during Hanukkah because it's Hanukkah season right now. So like, um, but like also the race, uh, racist and anti-Semitic stuff that's happening. A lot of us um, in the school are really. I think what's really great about this is it really describes everything very clearly not everything like a lot but a lot just that so people can understand that this isn't just something that's happening today what happened last friday but something that happened throughout history and it's not something that's new um and i wish it was translated more to younger people um but i feel like that's something that we can um say to the school committee and pgo people to help push for that too so yeah was it the anti-defamation league that, that had mentioned amherst I think, I don't know exactly which one. I just saw a lot of people post um, from my school, but it might've been that, yeah. yeah. It was it's like a thread. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, so, so the next item is an update on the uh, community safety working group. I, we're somewhat up to speed at this point. Was there anything else to add to that or we're, we're solid on that? I think we're yeah, solid. We don't yeah, we don't have any insights on what's going on in there. And, you know, I know my sister is in it, but to tell, I got on the shoot. I haven't asked her anything because I want to be stay out of it and let them do their work. And I want to be surprised when when things comes up. And like God on the shoot, I haven't asked her one question. <laughs> Aren't they meeting right now? And that's why Jennifer's not here. Oh, yeah, yeah. correct. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She'll be back at 730 if we're still meeting at that time. Did you say, Ben, in the beginning, you're going to ask them to come and speak to this group at some point? I just want to, should I put that in the minutes or? Sid, actually. Oh, Sid, okay. Met. Yeah, I had said that maybe after they do their first report, we could invite them to come and just, you know, and uh, let us know what, what they came up with and see if there's any way we can help in that process, you know, because I think that there's definitely ways we can help. community outreach outreach survey we actually have to wait for Jen to come back for that right mm -hmm. I don't I don't have a lot of background as to where we are right now so so the next section of the the agenda is dealing with upcoming events so we have Kwanzaa coming up and um who do we normally team up with for that is that so Kwanzaa is being held well, Kwanzaa is being held this week. We had a meeting this morning. Jen, uh, Jennifer had a meeting with some of our, again, young students from Poku were volunteering to open up Kwanzaa on the 26th. Um, I believe Monica Cage, Joel Blandin, and Phoenix Ferreira Ford will be opening up, helping open up, um, talking about the meaning of Kwanzaa, the principles of Kwanzaa and setting the first uh, candle, which will be Emoja for Unity along with um, Ms. Ingrid Askew and Dr. Ruth Bass Green. I think those are the folks that are on the agenda for day one anyway. And that's the only thing we talked about that I know of because it involves my young people of POKU. And um, I know that she has other people that are helping this week and will be reaching out to some members of this Human Rights Commission for their input um for the week so she can report more on it but that's um what we discussed today um again mainly the first day because that's what our young leaders are a part of this is all being done virtually right like the, uh, absolutely is there, yeah. is there like work for us to share like that we could kind of send out the um i think that you should reach out to jennifer again like i said she's going to yeah. be reaching out to people it's going to be every day she's going to try to get amherst media to record it they she's not sure they can do it live but can put it together for viewing for later on um but she's going to need some assistance for every day of kwanzaa there needs to be a different candle lit and a different um day um emoja kuji chagalia uh ujima ujama um, Nia, Kawumba, and Amani. Those are the seven principles. So she's going to need somebody to um, talk about um, 
those each day and um, light the unity, light the candle for each day. So again, um, she might be reaching out to some people in this com uh, committee for that. Perfect. And then after that, we have, uh, well, yeah, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. So what, um, what exactly is it that, that we're doing instead of the, the breakfast? It's another virtual event, right? I'm not quite sure. Jennifer reached out to Ms. Custard and I, and we directed her to um, Richmond and Pia Bonnie, who is usually um, the chair of the Martin Luther King breakfast. I know Jennifer reached out to us because again, um, members of POCU volunteer their services at the breakfast each year. And so I'm not sure where we are with that. I also want to acknowledge, we acknowledge Hanukkah and on um, January 6th, we also have Three Kings Day um, coming up and yeah. Is, is Three Kings Day like celebrated at all up here besides like Holyoke? Like has, has there ever been like an Amherst Three Kings Day? Or, or, is it, or is it that it's too, I just realized that it's like religiously rooted, right? So. No, not so much. I know of some families who celebrated, you know, um, even though it, it Three Kings Day is more in the United States is more of a, you know, Latinx um, tradition. There's some Cape Verdeans actually that celebrated too. So, um, and I know of families, it's not like a huge celebration, but there are some families that that, that celebrated um, in the Cape Verdean community in Amish too. It was like a, huge holiday like I, I went to Hartford Public for high school and that, that was, I was like I think it was huge for me because it was right after winter break and then we had another day off I think that was <laughs> um the schools actually have it off this year yeah and this will be the first oh, yeah, year that we actually have it off to mm -hmm. celebrate if that matters and we, maybe we can do something for that day um, ben, if you really want to, I think if you got a hold of Dr. Um, Guevara, Marta, mm -hmm. um, she might be able to get you a little bit more. I'm not familiar, yeah. um, but she might be able to give you a little bit more history and understanding of what happens in the Latinx community here. Yeah. Um, so if we don't, you know, it's really late in the game to really do something strong but maybe we can, um, as a new member of the community, keep this in mind that we need to um, really adhere to something for them in the future, for us, because they're all, it's all us in the future. Right. Okay. And then let's see, Chinese New Year. Are there any major celebrations? I, I know like, Within the schools, they, there were like Wildwood had a huge parade that they would do inside, but I'm not sure what's being done like virtually this year. Is that anyone else have any insight on that? No. I think Jennifer's working. I mentioned something to me, um, but I, I don't know the details of it, so I can't speak to it very intelligently. <laughs> Um, but I think she's mentioned something to me. So when she gets back, maybe she'll have something to tell you that she's working on for that. Yeah. Then what else do we have? Oh, and then the entire Black History Month. So with our previous conversation, I kind of had an idea. And I, I think, I mean, I think we have, we have like a little more than a month to prepare. I, I think it's possible for us to do, but to, to kind of sort of do like, I don't know if we would do daily profiles, but what do, what do folks think about doing profiles of like localized black history? I, I had, so just so you know that this is a stolen idea sort of from a sibling. So like my sister just did this, this art heels tour where they went through, they went all the way down to Savannah, Georgia and back and, and you know, they kind of like interacted with, with all of these local communities. And, and the thing that, that she brought back with her was that almost everywhere that they went, 
like people had like robust knowledge about their localized black history and, and not just things that, that would have like kind of like fed into the, the you know the, the national story right like our we, we get this this little boxed in version of, of civil rights that we learn in school it was kind of more in depth and I, I was thinking about like there is a very rich and interesting history in, in Amherst here like like not just was there someone from the, the or a couple people from the 54th here, right? The the movie Glory, the character Snowball was actually based on multiple people from here, like little things like that. But I was just wondering if, if folks had ideas about things to do to kind of celebrate localized. So I did have a couple of ideas. I know, do we still uh, meet together on the town common to raise the, raise the flag for Black History Month? Because at that celebration, we could maybe honor one of our elders, maybe Mr. Brooks, Carly Tartikoff, Unawami Jean Moss, and one of our young people. And there's two that I have in mind. One is on this call, Petua. <laughs> and the other one is our um, young lady who actually lives in South Hadley, but uh, go, attends school in, at Fort River. And she has a reading um, oh. uh, her name is Aaliyah Hall, and she has been reading, she has her um, uh, Dreamland with Aaliyah. She started when the pandemic hit, her and her sister, Sisters Productions, started reading books every day. She read a book every day from, I think, um, help me Sid, March 30th to September 30th. And now she reads on the weekends because she has her schoolwork to do. So I think that mm -hmm. if we could highlight an elder and a young person or two during that flag raising, that would be a great opportunity yes. to bring some richness to our community and to allow people to know that there are some great things going on and great people that are here that are, are culturally black. And, and I like that because you have like two different aspects of, of youth, right? like multi-generational youth and, and celebrating at least one of our elders. So it's, it's hard to pick, like, do we, how do we do that? Would we, would we vote on who it is? I don't know. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What is that? I mean, what does everybody else think? I mean, that's just an idea that I had that I would put out there is we're doing this flag raising anyway. I know we have to stay socially distanced. I don't even know if the folks can actually be there, but at whatever we do for Black History Month to begin Black History Month and raise that flag, I would love to be able to highlight some of the people that, that are right here in this town. Mm -hmm. Dr. But Sid, he, Dr. He, Sid, he, Sid's another he, one. Mary Custer, have, come on. I think that's a great idea, but you know, for the elders, we have to be definitely cognizant that COVID, you know, is a real deal and some of them may not want to come out and be exposed. So um, we would have to ask them for, you know, for them to feel comfortable coming out, right? Mm -hmm. And if they don't, maybe we could even have, a, have them do a video, right? They could do a video and then we, yep. can, we can project it if that's someone that we feel that um, issue of them should be um, commemorated on that day. Um, how highlighted um, that we could, they could do a video. Um, but I just don't want to put them in a, in a position where they feel that they have to show up because I know some people are doing the real quarantine, especially after a certain age. I, you know, I don't, I don't blame them for doing that. Absolutely. So, but that, I think that's a great idea, Liz. I, I support, definitely support that. Yeah, um, there are two other opportunities, though, I, I just uh, would point out. Last year, we had, uh, on Martin Luther King's birthday itself, we had a reading of a proclamation uh, at Town Hall. And, uh, and then we went over to the library and uh, we watched a video and had a discussion. Um, and, and so uh, if, if we wanted to do something surrounding that uh, on, on around Martin Luther King uh, Jr.'s birthday, um, again online, I think that that's another way to, to do it, and and would uh, particularly if we're we're honoring people uh, in our community who shouldn't be exposed, shouldn't be 
coming together in person at this point, that would be another opportunity. Um, also in June, uh, if we do decide to do something again, like our Human Rights Heroes Award, which uh, historically we have honored our, uh, our young people at that, but we did in 2016, I think it was, um, honor uh, Greg Bascom as well um, uh, when he had uh, come off of the commission at that point. Uh, so that's another time where there's not another opportunity for us to, to try to look at people in our community if we wanna take more time to think through how we wanna do that. Um, so we don't have to make a decision this moment if we're uncomfortable doing that. Yeah, I, I kind of like the theme of bridging with generations like that. I'm sorry, go ahead. I, I, yeah, I agree. I think that would be a good to do like present day or, or like get this time, people who are still alive, <laughs> who are here today that are um, to be honored, that would be good. And then I also found this um, site over the summer. It's called like the Black History in the Town of Amherst. And it was put together by um, um, Dr. Amakar Shabazz and, and the Afro Studies Department. And they have like a lot of information there. So if we were to do like historical profiles of um, Amherst, uh, Black Amherst residents. Like, I feel like there's a lot of information on that site and I can share it with everyone, um, but that would be a great opportunity to like show the history because most of the information from the resolution that I that we just read, I, I knew because of that site that I went to over the summer and I thought it was very impactful, so yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, uh, partook, uh, partook, is that a word? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> English is my second language, so I'm gonna use that as an excuse. Um, <laughs> um, this is a couple of years ago, uh, two, three years ago, um, where Amelka Shabazz, Dr. Shabazz and, and the group did, did uh, kind of a recap of Amherst history, very short, so it didn't encompass everything for Juneteenth. And they did an amazing, amazing job. And I learned a lot from that, even though I had been, have been here for over 30 years, there was lots of pieces I didn't know. So I agree with you, Pat, with that. That's, that's a great resource. and. Um, and utilizing Dr. Shabazz um, and his, because I know he's done a lot of work in that area. Um, I know at UMass he teaches um, a seminar or colloquium on uh, the, the history of Springfield. Um, maybe there's, there's a place where he could do a history of Amherst, you know, for for people who want to uh, to learn about the history of Amherst, because he does that at UMass for history of Springfield and the Black population of Springfield. One other thing we can do for Black History Month is um, at the high school in the past years, and it didn't happen last year, and I'm not sure why, but usually on the last day of Black History Month, we have a reading of those notables who have gone on um, and just the kids come on the loudspeaker and they read names. And Petra, I don't know if we've done it since you've been in high, we haven't done this in a couple of years, I don't think. But we used to go on and just read um, the notable, not even the notable black uh, black uh, leaders in all categories that have passed on, and maybe we can do that for members of the town of Amherst who have gone on. And it it's not that they have to be there, but just acknowledge that um, here's some people who have left us in the past year. So those are some of my thoughts. Um, I'd be glad to try to put something together with the help of Jennifer and anybody else who wants to join me and present it at our January meeting. I agree with Sid that some people may not want to be out because we still have COVID, but and I am not the technical person. Don't ask me to record. To I can't. You know, I always need help. You know, they had the the um, teachers do a recording of themselves for open house. Oh my God, I, I was traumatized. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I would gladly try to, um, you know, maybe if they don't want to be there, we can have a recording of them and they, it can be played over the loudspeaker or whatever we have. Um, like we had had a couple of Fridays ago for the town declaration. Um, yeah, so I can put some more thought together about that. I wouldn't want to know who people thought as an elder, but, you know, we have somebody in middle school, maybe we can do 
somebody in elementary school, somebody in the regional school district, uh, middle school, high school, somebody uh, younger, and then one of our elders and just highlight them and try to do that each year. So yeah, those are just some thoughts. I wanted to let you guys know that I texted Jen to ask when she's coming back because I know there's some things that she could speak to a lot better than I can and she can be here at 730. So 10 more minutes and Jen will be here. We can stall it out for that long. Right, if you can, please. <laughs> <laughs> then what else? Was oh, a retreat for this year. Um, yeah, so, so do folks have any thoughts? Like, I, I guess the first thing we would have to kind of narrow down is the when, right? That's, that was the hardest part, I think, last year. It felt like it anyway. And then we also have to figure out how everyone gets sandwiches again. I like the sandwiches. <laughs> it's all about that. But didn't, didn't we do that in the, was it springtime? Late springtime, early summer? Correct, correct me if I'm wrong, Matthew. No, we, did, we the, did it. We did that November of uh, 2019. Was, was it? The, okay. When we did the retreat. Yeah. The one in South Amherst in the, yep. the library? It was November? Yeah. Somehow, I, somehow I, I felt like it was nice and warm. I don't know why. <laughs> It wasn't that cold yet, and it was. Uh, it was the. I think it was the first. Uh, the first meeting in Petua came to. So yeah, um, yeah, Petua's the band yeah. was there. I remember, and yep. uh, was it? Yeah, well, yeah, well, because does anyone hear a weird buzzing? Like yes. a little. Okay. All right. Some feedback from somewhere. Actually, no, I don't. Now I don't. It just stopped. <laughs> right. But yeah, I figure, um, but how long did it take to, to kind of coordinate that last year? Was it like a matter of a couple meetings that we figured? Uh, it, it did not take long to coordinate, um, you know, I, I guess for, uh, couple of you who are here uh, were, were new members at the time and so we just uh, tried to figure out when everyone would be on so that we could uh, have a, a kind of review of what we do as a commission and and what our goals would be uh, long term and uh, and so if you wanted to uh, schedule something in the spring I think uh, we could probably you know we just have to plan it far enough out uh, which could be, you know, a month or two uh, for us to take the time. If you want it right now, my guess is we'd be doing it online though, right? Or, or how, how right. do you proceed doing that? Yeah, I, I can't think of any way to do it in person safely and <laughs> responsibly, but yeah, I, I was thinking that like a few hours online, like on a Saturday or something like that. Um, I don't know what what do folks think like March maybe early March is that insane or do we want to do it sooner or anytime at all <laughs> we're gonna do I'm not sooner. part of the group but I'm ready yeah. when do you want to do it I'm in <laughs> I was going to say if we're going to do it sooner for me it would have to be before February 4th because we that's when school starts at UMass, so probably would have to be the latest, the third week of January for me, because then things just ramp up really quickly. So, and I know some other folks here teach too, so. Yeah, I, I will say that January, um, I, I think I'm at a, a conference the first week in January and doing a child drop off um, the second week of January um and the third week trying to figure out if we're going to have psats and you know like once i can get a kid to, to there if, if they're having it uh then then i'm good for the rest of that weekend so um but but yeah the, this um teaching starts up for me on the 19th of january so so it's going to get kind of busy at that point it's chaos from then on so what does everybody else think third week in january or later 
So the only hesitation in my calendar is I um, work for UMass Athletics. I do their school board. And we are day to day when it comes to games because they get cancellations. And for instance, last week the game was canceled, but then the next, while we're at the women's game, the, the, another team decided they would come and play. So then the game, a, ga a game was on for the time that they told us we were canceled. So it was really weird. And that's what's gonna be going on depending on this um, pandemic. And so that's the only hesitation that I have is I could say yes to this date and then they'll call me and say, oh, this team canceled or this team is coming and we need you at this game. So when when is the season over for you, Liz? The season's over the first weekend in March. Yeah, we can look we can look for look for early spring too. I mean, it doesn't have to be done yeah. right away. And that way it would also give us a, a chance. Hopefully by then we'll have uh Hazid Gaia who just you know resigned. We might get somebody else in there, so it might be another new person in. So yeah. yeah I like, I like the Human Rights Commission. Uh, Spring break with the Human Rights Commission. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner's gone mild. Like I'm it. writing that down for the minute. Spring break with the Human Rights Commission. I've got it. <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully, I'll be in St. Bart's and then I can just, you know, just zoom in. See what I'm saying? There we go. <laughs> Spring break in St. Bart's. <laughs> I work I on wish. a tropical background. Yeah. I know. I wish. <laughs> All right. So, delegation of calendar events. Oh. Hmm. So, are we going to delegate each of these things to, to individuals or groups? Like, are we going to have. Do we need like a subgroup, like a planning committee for our retreat or anything like that? Is that insane? Or should we just keep have it like as a as a running agenda item until but. I say um let's have it a running agenda thing and wait until it warms up and we kind of know what people's schedules are. And then see what COVID is in like two or three months. It's gonna be gone soon. It's just gonna, from what I understand, I read that on the Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a good resource, Ben. That's a good resource. Right. <laughs> that's a good Definitely. resource. <laughs> January January twenty first will be gone according yes. to certain people. Yes, the, right. the plague leaves. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Some people say it was never here. You know, if you don't, <laughs> you read a lot of stuff. Well, I never saw it. So, <laughs> all right. So we have to stall out for for Jen to circle back to a couple topics, right? I think she's going to be here in like three minutes. Um, I mean, if you didn't need to know more about her, you know, I know she's doing some work on. Kwanzaa and Martin Luther King Day and Black History Month. I mean, she's been putting some of her um, heart into pre preparing things. So I'd love for her to be able to tell you about them. But on the other hand, um, she probably speaks with all of you in other ways too. So we don't necessarily have to wait. It's up to you. All right. Yeah, the, the one thing I kind of wanted to hear back on was where we're at with the survey. Does anyone did, here did have any? She, did she send an, a sample to everyone here? Like what she was hoping to, to, to use? I think a while back. Am I remembering that right? I do remember like reviewing questions at one point. Did you guys get back to her with what, you know, differences and changes and maybe additions? I, I think it was going to be reframed as, as a questionnaire because, um, for, for various reasons, we, we couldn't call it a survey because it wasn't going out to um, to every household. It, they're, they're, whatever the mechanisms are to take a survey, we weren't following those procedures. Uh, and so uh, it was re being reframed as a questionnaire. We were also trying to figure out um, what we were doing with it, right? Uh, so when we when it originally came out as an idea, it was 
following up on a meeting in July, and um, and it was going to go to the people who had attended the the meeting on anti racism. Then it was going to go to uh, out more broadly because another thing we've been talking about was sharing, uh, trying to get from the population of Amherst what we as a town want to talk about, what we want to hear um, experts on, what we want to uh, communicate around, and so um, I think. One of the issues that came with the the questions was, well, what are we, what are we doing with this? Are we going to are we promising that if people say they want to talk about these issues, that the town of Amherst is actually going to be responsive and actually um, be able to bring speakers in or be able to have um, a, a type of community conversation? Because a lot of people were frustrated that we had a webinar in July. Um, on anti-racism and they weren't able to speak. We didn't have breakout groups. We didn't have uh, the ability for people to communicate with each other. Um, and so whatever framework we were gonna have, that didn't seem to be the one that worked. So there were just a lot of issues that, that came up um, surrounding what the, the next steps are. Right, because I feel like I hear you and without knowing the history, but why would we ever ask a question that we couldn't do something about if we if the answer, you know what I mean, there, there has to be some, some kind of meaning, or at least it's, it's got to be worth something for people to take the time to answer the questions. Uh, but I have no I mean, maybe that maybe Jennifer has already gone back to the town manager and maybe that is asked and answers. I don't know. Um, I met with um, Jennifer, I don't know, if, yeah, like me and Ms. Haygood met with um, Jennifer a couple weeks ago and we were talking about like a, like a group that kind of, is, kind of, kind of is like the school equity task force, the school committee, it would be like our, our school equity task force. So what they would be is a group of people that would um, like be able to like fulfill the things that are asked in like a questionnaire and there would be people that represent the community. So we were talking about like um, people who have like um, connections in the Asian community and the Latinx community and stuff like that. So she was talking about that. I don't know if that's what we're talking about, but that's what we talked about. I, de I definitely know she was thinking about like an ambassador, like not the word ambassador necessarily, but an ambassador like program where exactly like you said, um, finding someone from a particular community that could be a, a leader in that community to kind of help facilitate conversations. Yeah. So I, I, I know that's a hope of hers. I think she thinks that would be a really good way to get the questions or to the survey out there. Yeah, and we were talking about like providing like resource like child child care and like um, maybe a stipend for people so they don't have to like sacrifice that in order to come to this group and they can focus their energies on what we have to do. And it would be like project based um, instead of like, like a committee it would just be project based so that way people can like really focus on what they need to get done in that year or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's what we talked about to supplement the survey or the questionnaire, yeah. Yes, oh, look it, there's Jennifer. There we <laughs> Jennifer, we all missed you very much. So. Thank you. I'm still in two meetings. Uh oh. Oh no. Um. So I can send the information that I needed to send out to everyone in an email, and so I apologize. I really just have updates about the different. Oh, sorry, that's horrible. I have like five chins doing that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I just have information to about events that are going to happen. So. I can easily send that to you guys in an email and I so apologize that I'm double booked and hopefully this won't happen again. Or I'll see if we can change because Paul has made it very clear that he wants me to attend the community safety working group meetings at this time. Well, next time we're going to clone you and then you can be in both places at the same time. How about that? <laughs> you don't have to clone me. You have to clone my Zoom account. That's <laughs> oh, there we go. That's <laughs> Because I shut down their meeting, so. Uh -oh. oh, boy. Yeah. I, I'll, let, I'll, um, I'll let you know the things that came up, Jennifer, okay? All right, great. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Yikes. <laughs>
Now I can't get out. <laughs> Welcome to the Hotel California. Oh, boy. <laughs> Perfect. So, I believe, unless there are any items or, yeah, I just closed out the agenda, so I'm trying to freestyle this. Any any uh, topics that weren't reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to this? Any? Bueller? <laughs> well, I, I just have a question about... Um when we are next meeting, you know, sometimes December, January is a, a tough period. Um, and so I, I know in, in some of the past years, we've done things like when we knew we were all going to be at the MLK breakfast, let's have our meeting around that because we're all going to be there. Um, and, and if there's a conflict uh, with, for example, because I would our, when would our uh, January meeting be? Would, would it be the uh, 21st, 21st, I believe 21st. 21st. Okay. Yep. Um, so, you know, I, um, are we are we good for the twenty first? Is that when we're we're going to next meet? I am. Yeah. I Unless can. I get I'm a good. game message. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> All right. So it's ten. We're tentatively, or we're securely meeting on the the twenty first. We're solid on that. It's in the minutes now, Ben. We're securely meeting on the 21st. We are committed to it. All right. I love that. All right. Would anybody like to make any sort of a motion? Before we move to adjourn, really right. quickly, um, uh, when we find out ab about whatever's happening in, in January, whatever dates we hear from Jennifer, um, I, I'm guessing that that might be before our next meeting. Um, if there's something for uh, for MLK Day, and so it's it will ask all of us to probably just be there and be supportive of it. Um, so, um, I, but I'm guessing that there's nothing else we have to decide um, as far as doing something for MLK Day um, or inviting anyone to be there um, from the Human Rights Commission. So as long as we don't have anything else we need to do then I think we're, we're, we're good until our next meeting. Yeah. Good point. So hopefully we just have to show up. Right. <laughs> and if not, I bet Jen will reach out to you guys as a group and, and ask you, um, or, you know, if there's anything that didn't come up. Yeah. Thank you for your patience with me tonight. Thank you for Thank helping you. us tonight. Thanks for right. helping us. Thanks yeah. for filling in. All right. So so I, I will move if, if there's nothing else to adjourn. Second. It's quick. All right. <laughs> We're ready, I'm gonna write this We're down. ready. Yeah. <laughs> right. we'll, we'll take a you vote. No, my husband knocked on the door and said, Aren't you having dinner? I was like, oh, this is the going? <laughs> I don't wait, mind wait, dinner. Wait, wait, right wait. Let's not take a vote yet before we go. Um, I, I know for a fact that Patua has gotten some into some amazing institutions of higher learning. So I want to congratulate her for her amazing scholarship that has gotten her into some amazing institution and truly, truly appreciate you being part of this group, Patua. Yay! Columbia, here she comes! Columbia, here she comes! Columbia, right? Yeah, yeah. I did it through yeah. like Questbridge. So it got me through, it's like a early decision and like you yep. have to go. So like I got a full tuition scholarship, but I have yes, to pick you did. Wow. So that's, yeah, it's yes. really great. So I'll be studying wow. um, engineering, civil engineering at the school, school of science and applied, no, engineering and applied science or something like that. So yes, very amazing. Excited <laughs> yeah. Women yeah. in engineering. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm very excited. Petua, as soon as I found out my, I told my dad and my dad is so excited for you. He's <laughs> like, so you have like these random cheerleaders yeah. all over town for you. <laughs> yeah. When my mom goes to town to get food, she's like, everyone knows. And they're always congratulating her wherever she goes. And she's like, I didn't know people knew this, but like. Absolutely. Sure. It's a great That's accomplish. because I got a big mouth and I put it out there. <laughs> where when we're proud of one of our young people, it has to be known. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Congrats. You're welcome. Well, well, congratulations, man. And for the record, I'm I'm personally biased as to your your chosen major. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here, here as well. Yeah. 
<laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, and the other thing is if anybody can, for those folks out there that are listening um, and anybody who um, contributed to um, the Parent Center, um, we had an overwhelming response for those of our students and our families who are struggling uh, around the holidays with gift cards and toys and books and clothes for um, our young people around this holiday. So for everybody who contributed, for everybody who wanted to contribute and didn't, couldn't contribute, we thank you. It's still not too late to contribute, even though we're pretty good right now. Um, things always come up for our, our families. We have a number of homeless families and homeless students. And so whenever we can lend a helping hand, it's al always good. And so I know that because I was there at Sanders workshop, if you wanna call it that in the parent center on yesterday and they were hard at work um, getting these gift cards and things out. Um, the football team did a fundraiser and raised a lot of money and they wanted to do, they was doing it for the um, survival center, but the survival center is not accepting donations right now because of the pandemic. And they donated everything right to the, um, the family center for the members of our community that are struggling. So thank you for everybody. So if and we again, bought gift cards and we have not yet given them to anyone, um, would we be able to drive someplace you, and hand them to someone? And um, bring them right to the family center. They may not open the door for you if they don't know you, but they will open the door for me. I will be at the high school tomorrow. So if you want to um, come and drop them off at the high school, um, I was I, they let me in all the time because I volunteer some of my work there, my hours there. Um, I'm, a, I'm the one who does all the backpacks and all that stuff. So I was able to take some gift cards to them on Wednesday and will gladly do it again tomorrow. So okay. tomorrow will Thank be you. the last day because of course we close after tomorrow. So yeah. And they're working over overtime um, getting these things to our families. Great. We have to take the motion again. How does that work? Oh, um, we, we, you we can say that there's a motion on the floor. Second, so we just got to vote on it now. Yeah. There was a second. There was a discussion. <laughs> now <laughs> so we will now take a vote, right? <laughs> An eclectic discussion like that. All, we're all in favor. Aye. We're all. Aye. Aye. Already, so good night, everybody. Seven forty-two. I got it in the minutes. Yay. There you go. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Happy holidays Everybody's to everybody. Planet. Stay safe out there. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you.